You're in Paris with your family when your mom decides to take a family selfie. Well, 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 what do we have here? <laughs> How cute, Kyle. You look adorable in this picture. Wait, why is everyone so scared? You've never seen an 11 dimensional being before? Wussies. Actually, you know what? Let me show you guys something really terrifying. That isn't me. Today, I'm going to show you the 13 most terrifying pictures ever taken in space. Starting with this jump scare. Yes, that's a skull floating through space in the solar system. Boo! <laughs> no, seriously. This is asteroid 2015 TB145, better known as the Skull Asteroid. It is a 600 meter wide chunk of rock shaped weirdly like a human skull. Why? Because its surface is covered in impact craters and deep cavities carved up by millions of years of erosion. Must like your teeth, Kyle. I could actually help you with that as I am a qualified dentist. Well, at least I was before the incident. Anyway, Kyle's family, here's the fun part about the skull asteroid. This thing passed at 1.3 times the distance of the moon, traveling 126,000 kilometers an hour. And people actually observed it from Earth using telescopes. But the advanced stuff is what gives you a picture like that. Simply, it's what astronomers call a dead comet nucleus, the leftover burnt out core of a comet that ran out of ice. So instead of glowing like a normal comet, you get this creepy ass thing. Can you imagine free floating in space and seeing that? Damn. Oh, on that note, look at this photo. Yes, the untethered astronaut, Bruce McCandless II, the first human to ever float freely in space with absolutely nothing attached to him floating 100 meters away from the space shuttle. Imagine the terror you would feel in his position. Now hold on to that feeling because if you thought a floating skull was bad, wait until you see what happens when a planet gets absolutely obliterated. This, <laughs> this is Fomalhaut B. Astronomers originally thought they discovered one of the first exoplanets ever directly imaged. Everyone celebrated, scientists cheered, I hit someone in the face with a champagne cork that left us getting sued. And it was for nothing. Because the NASA homies looked again and the planet? It wasn't there anymore. Why? Because this wasn't a planet at all. It was the expanding debris cloud from a catastrophic collision of icy bodies. And so this creepy Lord of the Rings sour looking eye thing that should haunt your nightmares and give you fear beyond belief is actually a gigantic dust plume made of pulverized rock, ice, metal, and well, planet guts all spreading out at thousands of kilometers per hour. It glows from the heat because of all the tiny particles that are absorbing light from the star and then re-radiating it like a toaster oven. Like this toaster oven. No, I'm sorry, is that too close? Excuse me, I'm just, I'm just so excited because while you can't see this terrifying object with a telescope, I've got a whole bunch of haunting images that you can, some even with your weak human eyes assuming you had the right telescope to compensate for your evolutionary shortcomings. Of course, I don't have that problem. Of course. Anyway, Kyle's family, welcome to level two. And what better way to start than, oh look, another skull. Yeah, space has more skulls than Kyle has failed relationships, but this one though, isn't a rock. This is NGC 246, the Skull Nebula. So why does it look so creepy? Well, when sun-like stars die, they puff off their outer layers into space, creating these glowing shells of gas. Think of it as a star and zipping itself like a jacket. Except the jacket is made of hydrogen and the corpse inside is a white dwarf about the size of the Earth. Romantic stuff. And those soulless eyes that you see from the Skull Nebula? Those are literally regions where there is just way less gas due to how the star pulsates as it dies. And the wild part is that this thing is only 1600 light years away. It sounds far, but it's close for space. Basically, if Earth were to be Paris, the nebula would be Lyon, except instead of wine and baguettes, you get a star corpse screaming into the darkness and making weird faces, like the faces I make to people on the bus as I drive by in my fancy car. And unlike that fake exoplanet Fumwell held nonsense earlier, this object, you can actually see it with a telescope, even with a human brain, and not even a good human brain. Obviously, it's faint, so you're not going to get the high-res Hubble demon face right away, but you pop open a smart telescope and boom, there it is, a real-life space skull staring back at you. Yeah, anyway, say goodbye to the friendly skull because the next one is called the Witch Head. And despite their curses on me, this one, fortunately, is not an actual witch. I hope. This massive creepy face is actually just Starlight from Rigel. 
one of the brightest supergiant stars in Orion, reflecting off dust, and that's why it looks blue. Also, you can see this star with the naked eye in the Northern Hemisphere every night. But close up, the dust probably is left over from a past supernova. It is literally scattering light like those smoke signals I had to use during the interstellar war. And thank goodness I was stranded on that island with, uh, lots of food. Yeah. This nebula is just millions of years of erosion making a creepy face again. So you probably aren't too afraid of it. But here's a quick photo you probably all might recognize. The face on Mars. Yes, this photo came from NASA's Viking 1 spacecraft in 1976. The low resolution and lighting made this Martian hill look like a human face. Later, high resolution images showed it was just a natural rock with shadows creating the illusion. But you know, imagine seeing that in the 70s. It was a wild decade with so much grass being mowed. Yeah. Anyway, back to the Witch Head Nebula. Did I also mention that it's super close, about 900 light years? Which means, yes, Kyle's family, if you weren't strapped to these chairs with 100% consent, you could actually see parts of it with long exposure telescopes. What does that mean? Well, why don't I explain to your family which telescopes you'll need and what parts are important so you can all take a look at most of these objects yourself. You know, when I eventually release you from this basement, of course. So long exposure means collecting light over time so faint galaxies and nebula become visible. For that, you'll want refractor telescopes for sharpness, reflectors for deep space brightness, or hybrids that do both. I've linked the best telescope buying guides for each purpose in the description for you. Okay, now that you know which telescopes you need so you can do this for yourselves, it's time to go find some spooky pumpkins. Meet C.W. Leonis, aka the Pumpkin Star, because this object looks like it's one bad day away from bursting like a pumpkin that refused to become another Starbucks drink. This is a carbon star, a dying red giant that spat up so much carbon from its interior that it is literally staining this star's atmosphere orange-red. It's blowing off gas and soot into space, <laughs> forming these tangled arcs and shells all around it. Think of it as a star going through an emo phase, but it's an 86-year-old man and not a teenager listening to my chemical romance. This star is only about 300 light years away. That is insanely close for something this chaotic. Then it's bright, like really bright. You can actually see this thing with a telescope as a deep orange red dot in the sky. Your ancestors would have worshiped it, wait. How did you all get free? You're also worshipping it? What sort of cult family are you? Get back in your chairs! Goose! Help! Whew, I agree. We can go back to fighting in another video. We just can't have carbon-style cults, right? Alright, I'll see you for the 6pm shop. Anyway, Kyle's family, look at this! Look at it! Yes, nothing! Now look again! <laughs> yeah, don't piss me off again. This is SN1572, Tuco's supernova remnant the remains of a star that went supernova, but it actually wasn't just any ordinary supernova. This star was a white dwarf that had already died. It then munched another star alive until he got so fat, he went actually supernova and exploded so violently the people on Earth saw it with their naked eyes in 1572. That's right, this was a literal supernova visible in daylight. What you're looking at now is a shockwave still expanding from that explosion, but only like this photo in X-rays. The visible light? long since gone, and now it looks like there's almost nothing there. When it exploded though, the gas expanded at about 5,000 kilometers per second, that's 1% the speed of light. The filaments and the edges in the photo you see, those are ultra-heated gas structures glowing in X-rays microwaves as the blast wave slams into surrounding material. Remember, your pitiful eyes can only see an absolute tiny fraction of all the light out there. Visible light, the rest of the electromagnetic spectrum this requires special equipment, so you can only see it with a telescope, sort of. The remnant is faint in visible light, so amateurs only catch a small portion of it, but the fact that humans saw the original explosion with their eyes? Absolutely insane. <laughs> and speaking of insane, it's time to level up this shit. It's time for some terrifying objects that are just spewing with death, despair, and are places you really don't want to go. Let's turn out the lights for this one, shall we? Next up, NGC 1999, also known as the Cosmic Keyhole. Yes, a literal hole of nothing carved into a bright nebula by young stars blasting out gas. That dark spot? That's not dust blocking the light, that's an actual void. A punched out gap in space. At one point, astronomers thought they were molecular clouds. Literal gas that is so dense and cold, it's like traveling into nothingness. 
but it's not nothingness. It's just gas so cold that it blocks all light. And I've made that trip, so yeah, even I ain't traveling through that hole, even though it's just literally nothing. But yes, with a smart telescope like uh, this bad boy, you can actually see this nebula man the keyhole shape, and you too can stare directly into emptiness. Well, in addition to you doing it every morning in the mirror, unless you subscribe. Then you probably just see hotness as a gravity pool subscriber. Next, the ghost head nebula, because apparently space thinks you're not traumatized enough. Those two glowing heads, those are two massive star forming regions lighting up surrounding gas. One of them even has a giant young blue star in the center, blasting out radiation more than that time I blasted myself in the face with a garden hose. While you can't see this yourself and take photos yourself, those creepy ghost faces, that part is courtesy of Hubble. Right, now that we're done with all the nebula and gas and local galactic stuff, why don't we level up again and start to see some really off-putting galaxies. But as I can see you're all getting a little bit used to these photos, I'm going to give it to you in a speed round. So let me just force open all your eyelids and here we go. Starting with M74, the Phantom Galaxy, a massive spiral so faint it basically gaslights astronomers by pretending not to exist. But when you use the big scopes, what unravels is a graveyard-like spiral of nothing but death and ancient wars. Well, maybe. Maybe I was there, maybe I wasn't. But mostly, it's just a huge combination of old and young stars evolving in a terrifying shape that looks like a dragon slayer after it killed everybody. Boo! Haha, <laughs> that never gets old. Next up, NGC 4696, or the Goth Galaxy. Because even the Milky Way wants a goth girlfriend. And I think you can see why it got its name. A dark core with what looks like spirals of blood and organic matter just spiraling outside. Ugh. Of course, this galaxy also has more in-depth pictures of everything it contains, but those filaments that it's sucking in? Haunting. But what about Arp Mador 2026-424? Two galaxies in mid-collision, stretched into a Joker-type smile. This is what happens when star cities crash at hundreds of kilometers a second. And when you ask how we know what galaxies do when they collide, these photos give us all the various pictures explaining the different aspects of the process. But rather than show you that again, I've saved the most awe-inspiring photo for last. And then I'll let you continue enjoying your vacation in Paris. We've seen skull, witches, exploding stars, cosmic keyholes, nebula, skeletons, goth galaxies, and literal galactic car crashes. But now we can leave all of that behind and go straight into the deep universe where light takes billions of years just to reach your puny little eyeballs. And what do we find out there? A question mark. Yes, the universe literally sent us punctuation. This is a warped pair of merging galaxies captured by the James Webb Space Telescope, twisted into a perfect question mark. This thing is over a billion light years away. So far that when the light left those galaxies for its long journey to our planet, Earth didn't even have animals yet, just slime. Meanwhile, this galaxy was already confused. As a photo, it is hands down one of the most existentially offensive things the universe has ever thrown at humanity. Millions of galaxies showing that we are nothing in this universe. And also a giant glowing question mark at the edge of time asking us, what are you doing with your life? Damn, that's as almost as deep as going into deep space.